I said it absolutely has to be said in 1970 when the book was published and she said phew you know because she wouldn't <laughs> want to do it if it if you know if somebody wanted to modernize it my wife and my daughter are big big fans of the movie um they went and saw it in theaters and uh I just got to watch it on blu-ray with them and it was a great experience um um just a phenomenal movie. Uh, uh, I, asked, I asked my daughter if she would help with writing questions for the interview because oh, great. I felt like that would be like the best way. Totally. To, you know what I mean? Like, yes, I love it. Audience, she totally. is. And so, yes. Um, yes. Um, she is 10. So I had her help me write some questions. I love and, it. Um, awesome. And I am going to pull those up so that we can uh, go through them. I, I will confess, I, I did help a little with wording. Uh, okay. <laughs> phrase it. Um, but one of the first questions that she had, and I know that this uh, is an, an aspect of the book, but one of her first questions was, why do you feel like the grandmother granddaughter uh, dynamic is so important to the story? Hmm. Um, well, um, plot wise, uh, it's it's really important in the book that this move feels especially devastating to Margaret. Right. So it's not only that she's moving away from her home and all her friends and everything that she knows, but also the person who loves her most in the world. And she has like this wonderful relationship with, and is sort of like a fairy godmother, grandma type person. Um, so just feeling the love of that relationship and how the distance is difficult um, feels important to the story. Um, and also the way, also it feeds into the sort of the way the, uh, you know, the story pays off in the end when, when both sets of grandparents come and everything blows up. Yeah. I, I felt like when, when we were talking about that question and why she had that, um, I, I felt like maybe it was very personal for her because our family moved across the country. And so she mm. didn't hear her grandparents anymore. Mm. I feel like yeah. watching the movie and watching that play out was sort of a, a cathartic experience for her, maybe. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's a tough thing to move away from family and to be, you know, and yes. especially at such a formidable time in your life. Totally. Yes. Yeah. And I think that relationship with, especially at that age with your grandparents is a big deal, you know? Um, yeah. The, uh, let's see, what else does she have? She wanted to do, the other question she had was, do you feel like, or, or working with actors like, like, like Rachel, like, um, 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 Benny, uh, mm -hmm. people who are established, who, who are um, filmmakers themselves, Benny Safdie and we filmmaker himself. Yeah. Um, um what benefit did the store does the story have from using those kinds of actors rather than someone maybe we wouldn't be familiar with? <laughs> um uh well, I mean, I think just in general, when you have somebody with enormous talent, like you just can't even express how much they how much they bring to the table. And um really, I, I was so I was just so impressed by how much everybody, um, each of the actors like thought about their own character just so deeply and on a level that that you you kind of can't as as the director. You know, you think a lot, but um, but an actor really dives deep um, and brings to the table a lot of really interesting ideas and questions. And to me, the most exciting day on the set is when you know, when you think you know what the scene is going to be like, but then everybody's ideas combined together, make it into something that you didn't imagine that no one that nobody imagined. It's sort of the collaboration that uh, creates something that, um, you know, that you couldn't have fathomed. That's cool. That may lead into the last question that Torn had, which is mm -hmm. what was your favorite part about filming the movie? What did you like most? I loved filming uh, the girls at summer camp. That was just like, there's just like a wistful, awesome, I don't know, just a nostalgia that was wonderful. And it was like, it was a day where we were all running around this beautiful summer camp and, you know, mm -hmm. kids in inner tubes. And there was just such joy. Um, I also loved filming um, Abby when she dances around with the sock boobs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she, and she makes sort of like a little music video in her room. Um, that was, that was just like a day full of so much laughter and joy. Um, so, um, 
yeah, it was, and, and there's something I have to say, there's something about filming with kids. It's, it's bananas, but it is <laughs> so much fun. It's so much fun. And they bring so much energy and joy and um, uh, it's hard not to smile on set. So that's cool. I, um, I read a little bit about, about making the film happen and all that and how Judy Bloom had had opportunities in the past, but it wasn't until this, this story, this script that mm -hmm. she felt like this was what she wanted to do with the, with that story or how, mm -hmm. who she wanted, where she wanted the story to go. Um, yeah. I was curious, was mm -hmm. keeping the setting in the seventies, a part of sort of like what she wanted. And was that something you wanted? Were there ever conversations about modernizing it? Is that something she didn't want? Uh, that was something neither of us wanted. And actually okay. in, in the very first meeting, the very first time we sat down, it was one of the first things that we talked about. Um, I, I, you know, I said it absolutely has to be said in 1970 when the book was published and she said, phew, you know, because she <laughs> wouldn't want to do it if, it, if, you know, if somebody wanted to modernize it. So, um, so, so luckily we were, we were on the same page from the very beginning on that. That's awesome. That's really cool. I, I was, I, I thought it was really neat to, to do that and to just go with that. And it's really interesting to me to see how all of those issues all of those same life experiences are still relevant. You know, you're looking back on it after 40, 50 years and wow, people are still having these same experiences. Little girls are still yes. feeling the same way. Yeah. Father, seeing my daughter connect to that was really special. That And that's exactly part of the reason that, um, that I really wanted to, you know, to set it, to set it when it was actually published because there is something about that. There's something connective about realizing that every every girl has gone through this throughout all history. You know, yeah. something about that that I think is you know just a relief in some in some way. Yeah, I of course. I mean, I should say I never read the book when I was a kid. It wasn't read to me. It just mm -hmm. never came up. But yeah. my wife, my wife, she said um, that her grandmother read it to her mother. Mm -hmm. Her mother read it to her and her sisters. And wow. An opportunity to see it with her, see the movie with her daughter. So it was a really wow. cool, like, generational experience. And that's when, awesome. And when we watched it, her other grandmother was with us. She'd come to visit. And so I got to watch these three generations of, of <laughs> that's so family, cool. Watch this movie at the same time and see how they all differently experienced. Yes and related to it and and it was really fascinating to realize that across the board from 70 to 40 to 10 women look at this story and they're like this is exactly what life is like and i, yeah. I feel like i oh, hadn't man. seen that before wow that's so cool oh that's really neat that, have you that... had a have you gotten a lot of positive uh, you know uh, comments and 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 support from fans and people saying like wow i really connected with this i really resonated with this yeah and i mean but it's also i think so much of it is a credit to judy bloom i mean she wrote this book that has been so you know so lasting i mean i think she she wrote it in a way that was so um so deeply honest it just it transcends time um it's true it's true every decade yeah I it do, I just dawned on me that Torn had another question. I just remembered, okay. and and I did some research and I and I saw that 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 Judy had written a, a second book, which is all about sort of a, a teenage boy growing up. All that. Yes. Uh -huh. Torn's question. Torn's question was: Do you think there there would ever be a sequel? Is there a chance for the story to continue and us see Margaret as she gets older? <laughs> or was that, is that something you think would ever happen? You know, I uh, people have have asked Judy Bloom that for years. And she, <laughs> yeah, and I would, I'd love it. I'd love if she would write something. But, um, but yeah, but I think this is, I think this is it. She's expressed sure. this is it. Yep. <laughs> I think that makes sense, and 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 yeah. you can see a lot of, and women can see a lot of themselves in that experience, yeah. and, and being a child, and what you go through growing up, and puberty, and adolescence to teen years, and all that. So. Yeah, I think there's there's probably plenty in the uh, in the adult years, <laughs> teenage yeah. years, you know, that everybody can just go watch Edge of 17. 
Yeah. That's right. That's that's right. That's where I'll send them. If you want a good follow up, <laughs> want a exactly. really really good follow up. That is such a great movie, Kelly. I oh, love thank I love you. Edge of Seventeen so so much. I oh, loved, thank loved you. I loved Margaret. I loved watching watching that movie and seeing the women in my family experience. It was so cool. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm pumped. I mean, it's out on Blu-ray, digital. People mm-hmm. can watch it wherever they want. Um, um, before I let you go, I wanted to tell you one thing. We were as we were watching the movie and the scene uh, where there is is they need to get a tampon or a pad. Yes. Uh-huh. My daughter, <laughs> she goes very serious. She goes, those are never stocked and they don't work. <laughs> 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 and I just died. I was like, "Well, I'm definitely going to tell Kelly about that." <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that funny, Kelly. You're the that cool- is amazing. Thank oh, you. awesome! Thank you, Thank you so much. Days.